record. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start. I want a piece of whatever Chelsea's eating. Looks like peanut butter bread. <laughs> um, I'm going to just drink my Shakeology. But welcome, everybody, to our Thursday night call. It doesn't feel like Thursday to me. I feel like it's Monday. But thanks for coming on. Um, I don't want to do much talking tonight. I want to let Candace talk here in a few minutes so that she can share with you guys what she's doing. Um, but I did just want to start out like we always do with some um, recognition and just updates. And I apologize if I seem more scatterbrained than usual. Right now my brain is like a little bit on information overload because I have like these two books that Chelsea and I were talking about earlier trying to figure out new systems to put in place and I'm trying to still process everything from the conference. So if I seem a little bit off, that's why I'm just like processing. But anyway, you guys don't really care about all that. So I'll just go ahead and get into the call. Um, tonight we are going to talk about Candace, who's one of my new coaches and she's been a coach for like literally two weeks and is already over halfway to diamond. So I just wanted to have her share and I'll talk a little bit about her in a minute, but just to recognize all of our peeps um, for being in success club so far. I don't have the list pulled up because I'm a slacker. So let me go ahead and pull up the list and welcome to all of our new coaches as well. While I get into the group and pull up the success club list, I'll go ahead and just go through our updates. Um, you guys, Summit is like in two months. There's not a wait list anymore. There's still spots available. You're, there's still time to come or to go. There's still time to earn money to go. You guys all have got to find a way to get there. And that's something we talked about on the team call a few weeks ago. And I posted in the team page about like an example earlier today, just of other coaches that I know and like how their income has grown since they went to summit. So you just got to make it a non-negotiable to get there and work with your sponsor on a system on how to get there. Um, so let's go ahead and shout out to all the people already in success club. Oh wait, let me back up um, before I do that. Um, just a reminder for the challenge packs on sale this month. We have insanity max 30 insanity max 30 kickstart and Body Beast, and they also extended Pio, Pio Kickstarter, and Ultimate Reset. And then also for the, for the Success Club trip for next year, go ahead and make sure that you are on the wait list for that because it is first come, first serve. Um, so people that are already in our Changing Lives Club, which is what our team calls Success Club, for 10 and up, we and I apologize because I'm going to butcher names, we have Amber Pereno, Chelsea Wiemet, Shannon Markin, um, Let's see who else. Hang on. Candace Lyons, of course, should be on here, but I guess we need, we didn't update it yet. We'll post another one this week. Oh, well, Candace was in Success Club 5 last week when we made this, but now she's at 24 points, she told me right before this call. So Success Club 5 and up, we have Gina Masters and a payment, Jennifer Swanson, Alicia Rotella, Samantha Denoto, Marissa Cole. For those that are almost there, we have Joshua Bond, Rochelle Hiddle, Heather Carnahan, Tanya Gonzalez, Christina Aguilar, Don Rollins, April Pace, Danielle Tague, Cassandra Mihak, Emily Garula, Christina Stocks, Whitney DeLong, Shannon Pronti, Jessica Simmons, Anna DeRosa, Aaron Fisher, Kimberly Neiman, Allie Davis, Jennifer Williams, Sarah Fosnight, Mary Trujillo, David, I, Leslie, I can never say your last name, and your husband's name is on here, so... I'm just going to say La Violette, and I know that's not right. I'm sorry. I'll unmute you in a second and ask you how to pr pronounce it correctly. Jessica McAdams, Carly Lowe, Melanie Burnside, Holly Hernandez, Holly Kramer, Cheyenne Rigetti, Trisha Seal, Bree Spuck, Missy Tribaletti, Christy Miller, Laura McNamara, Elizabeth Desco. Toe? Oh gosh, I'm just going to make someone else do these. <laughs> Adrian Cox, Amy Lassard, Amber Oakton, Katie Quinn, Teresa Rapson, Stephanie Magliocetti, Andrea Decker, Kelly Garofalo, Ina, Ina, sorry, Ina, Ina, I asked you how to pronounce your last name and I can't remember, so I'm just going to keep going on. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with the name pronouncings. Hattie Baker, um, Jennifer Roman, Janika Muse, Melissa Carr, Logan Haynes, Amy Sheridan, Kate Lewis, and Ashley Peary. That is just like terrible, and I really need help 
with my pronunciations. I'm sorry, everybody. Leslie, I'm unmuting you. I know you've told me before. Will you tell me one more time how I pronounce your last name, please? La Violette. La Violette. Did I say it? Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And I apologize for everyone else's name that I butchered. And I know I have a weird last name, too, so you guys can feel free to butcher my last name as well. So anyways, congrats to all of our peeps already in Success Club. And for those of you almost there, um, we still have 10 days left to get Success Club, and you guys can all totally do it. So um, I was going to actually make the team call this week about my biggest takeaways from the conference that I went to with my sponsor, but I felt like we could save that for another week because I know a lot of you right now are going for diamond and want to grow your business and you want to help people and you want to reach success club. So I felt like it would just make more sense instead of me talking to have someone else that is new to this, that, you know, just signed up two weeks ago and is making all those things happen. I thought it would be more beneficial for you guys to hear from her than it would be to hear from me. Um, I did just want to tell you guys a couple of things real quick that my biggest takeaways that I got from this conference, if you guys don't really know what the conference was, it, it, it was basically like Eric Warre has a conference called GoPro that he does every year. Um, I've gone to it the last two years and like life changing, like he is how I learned how to close people and talk to people professionally and excuse me, just make this business really simple. But basically at his conference, he has multiple different speakers all in other network marketing companies and they come and share their best, best practices. So this conference was similar. It, the the um, name of the organization that did it, it's the abbreviations are ANMP, which stands for Association of Network Marketing Professionals. It's freaking mouthful. But we had they had 60 different speakers and these were all people that have been in the industry between five and 20 years, depending on the person, they're all in different companies, but they're like the top earners in the industry, like millionaires and billionaires, which like, I don't even know how many zeros that is. Like, I don't even know billion dollars. That's a lot. But these are people that are like experts. And there's just a few things that I wanted to point out that they all said, like that it was like one common thread that they all said how important these things were. The number one thing that they all talked about was belief. You have to believe in yourself, you have to believe in the company, and you have to believe in the products. And that's the number one thing. It, belief is more important than actually like taking the steps, like the three vital behaviors. Like, yes, those are important. You can't just believe that you're going to reach success club and not invite anybody like that would be retarded. But belief is like the biggest thing. And that's, I know Tony Robbins talked about that when I went to his conference. And it's so important because what your thoughts, and I know I talk about this stuff all the time, but your thoughts become reality. So we have to kind of like rewrite what is in our brains with personal development and many other things that we'll talk about on a later team call. But that was like one of the biggest things they said. They also talked about being fully committed and just doing whatever it takes to reach whatever your why is because everyone has a different why. Um, they also talked about the importance of having a system, which we do have a system as a team. We just have to, we are, we are currently myself and the leaders are revising our system to make it a little bit more simple, but you know, it's all about plugging people into a system and having a system yourself. And they all also talked about having third, using third party tools, which is basically, they said that you don't want to be the prophet in your own land. So when you're talking to your prospects, you should use someone else's story more so than your own so that they can see like, oh, there's other people besides her or him, depending on if you're a boy or a girl, <laughs> that, you know, other people are doing this too. And it's really good to share stories of people they can relate to. Again, that's something we'll touch on later on a further team call, but they all seem to say those four different things that those are important. So I figured I'd just kind of throw that out there since I just went to the conference last week and I wanted to just point out my biggest takeaways. There's many more, but I'll stop rambling. I want to just go ahead and get into what we were going to talk about tonight, which is Miss Candace. Um, I met Candace on Instagram, like, I don't know, maybe what, within the last two to three months, like it hasn't been a super long time. Then we became friends on Facebook and we were chatting back and forth 
about like workouts and just getting to know each other and coffee and all all other kinds of things. She's in Canada. Um, she became a coach a couple weeks ago. I know when we first started talking, you know, she was interested in just doing the challenge group, but she mentioned to me that coaching was probably something she would want to look at later after she had her results. And I'm just like, Oh no, this girl's got to do it. Like she's like a natural, she's like born for this. So she signed up to be a coach. She's literally more than halfway to diamond. She's at success club 24. This is in two weeks, you guys, like two weeks. So this just proves that like, and Candace has her own photography business. She's a mom, she's married, she has a busy life. So it just goes to show that like, if you know, if you can manage your time and you lead with like your belief and passion to help people and you have a system, then it works. You just have to believe in yourself and trust the system. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot more than can that Candace is going to say, but that's just my little introduction on how her and I met and I'm just so proud of her. She's freaking like killing it. She sends me messages every day that I love. She like updates me on how many success club points she has. And like right before this call, she's like, okay, I'm up to 24 points now. So instead of going for 30 points for the month, I think I'm gonna go for 35. So I think it's just really cool. Cause I get excited that there's other crazy people like me that just want to go tell the whole world about this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute Candace and hand it over to her, and she's just going to share a little bit about her story and what she's doing, and I might ask you a few questions when you're done talking, but I'll go ahead and hand it over to Candace and mute myself and shut up. So you go, girl. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Candace, and I know probably nobody knows who I am because I just started, so I'm just kind of going to go over my personal story. Um, just basically my health and fitness story is all I'm going to get into tonight. So I've kind of always been active. When I was a teenager, I always played sports. I played field hockey for like nine years. Um, I snowboarded. I was a runner. I always, always was active, and I never had any issues at all maintaining my weight or maintaining my physique or anything like that. Um, and then, actually, if I'm going to be honest, my husband and I started having some fertility issues so I turned to um, comfort eating, I guess, as my way to let loose um, from that whole thing. So I ended up gaining a ton of weight. And then we, what, what, I, what, was, what I was doing is I was going on like these ridiculous strict diets. I would lose the weight. I'd be working out for like an hour and a half every day. And it was just unreal. And then it would just become too much and I would go on like this big binge and gain a bunch of weight back. Um, and then, so I was just kind of yo-yoing in that sense. We had our daughter, uh, we have a son as well, but we had our daughter and then um, that January, I was like, okay, I need to get, get on track here. I need to lose all my baby weight. So I, got a new treadmill and started running all the time again and was, you know, eating clean and like counting calories and watching everything that I ate. And I was doing so good. And it was really, it was like, my mindset was great. I was determined. Um, I lost like 55 pounds almost. So I was finally like starting to feel back to myself. And then I broke my leg in two different places last summer um, I was in the middle of training for a half marathon. I was running every day. Life was great. Leg broken. So I was in a cast for a few, almost three months. Um, and then the recovery process after that. So I ended up gaining back like 30 pounds. When I started trying to run again, it just wasn't happening. So I was walking. It just, and that just wasn't enough for me. Like to walk on a treadmill was driving me crazy. So I knew that I loved Pilates. I knew that I loved yoga and I had heard about Pio. So I was, you know, instantly wanted to try this out. I knew it was low impact, um, which would be perfect for my leg <laughs> because I was terrified of breaking it again. So at this point I kind of started following, I had already been following Jessica and actually another coach on Instagram unknowingly that they were beach body coaches at the time. And then Jessica reached out. We were talking. We, like she said, we became friends on Facebook. And 
I was kind of like, I don't know if I should, at this point I already had my pie out and I was doing it, but I'm a very impatient person. And as much as I love it, I wasn't seeing the immediate results that I wanted. Um, so I was kind of talking to her about, should I do 21 day fix? Should I do T25? Anyway, and that's when the whole ball got rolling about me joining and ordering my challenge pack and stuff and decided to take the plunge and become a coach. Um, I'm definitely nowhere near where I want to be as my, you know, a final goal or anything like that. But um, I figured why not share my journey with everyone while they're kind of, you know, going through theirs. I think that it would probably be more of an inspiration. Not that it's not if you're not already, like if you're already fit, but you know what I mean. Um, so as far as like where I heard about Beachbody in the first place and kind of got interested, I have a few friends that had done the programs before um, and then of course just like commercials and on TV and online and that kind of stuff so um, and then why did I become a coach I know that that's probably something that I should answer so of course I mean I was following Jessica on Facebook or on Instagram and just everything that she was posting, like her traveling, her lifestyle, her office was like from this delicious looking cafe. And I wanted that in my life. Um, something that my husband and I want to do with our children is travel. We want to, you know, be able to have tons of money in our savings account for emergencies. We are planning on um, hopefully sooner than later buying land and building a new house. Um, and ultimately when I really came down to it about why I wanted to coach at first, I thought it was because I wanted to have my Shakeology paid for every month. Um, and then I watched one of Jessica's videos, actually, I think it's in the, um, the coach training. It's like the why video. And she was talking about like dream big, like if your why doesn't make you want to cry, like, so then I was thinking about it. And if I was to actually achieve my ultimate why, what would it be? My husband works in the oil industry on the other side of the country and he's home for, you know, five days out of a week or out of a month. And it's fantastic. He has a great job, but I would really love if he could move home. So if I could supplement some of his income and move home, that would be like my huge why um, for him to be home with me and with our children and not to have to do, you know, the traveling back and forth and all that kind of stuff. So, um, of course, whenever I started, there was a lot of things that I was nervous about or scared about, um, wondering if I would succeed. I was terrified to fail. Still am. <laughs> um, I also was terrified to be that annoying person on everybody's Facebook news feed that is constantly posting like, you know, look at me or <laughs> sign up for this thing or whatever. I didn't want to be the annoying person that was messaging people and, you know, filling up people's news feeds. But as far as failing, I quickly realized that there is, I'm not going to get anywhere if I think that I'm going to fail. I'm not going to get anywhere. Um, if I'm scared of failing, that's basically me just telling myself that I'm going to fail. So why would I bother doing it if, you know, um, and as far as being, being scared to be annoying, I just got over it. If people don't want to hear what I'm saying, they can unfriend me or unfollow me. If they want to ignore me, then that's fine. But me holding myself back by being scared to talk to other people isn't going to get me anywhere. Um, I mean, you know, the three vital behaviors is invite, invite, invite. So posting on social media, messaging people like crazy and doing follow-ups, obviously that those are key things I need to be doing. So I just kind of got over myself, to be honest, very quickly because I'm a pretty determined person and I knew I didn't want to waste any time being scared. Um, anyway, as far as what I've been doing, I have just been trying to learn as much as possible um, watching videos, listening to audio, doing my personal development, all that kind of stuff. I've been, you know, following people that I aspire to be, such as Jessica or Chelsea and stuff like that on their social media and watching kind of how they handle themselves and their business and trying to learn from them because, I mean, clearly they know what they're doing. Um, 
So I've been doing that. I've all, I mean, obviously been doing my daily vitals and trying to share. I want it to seem natural though. I don't want it to seem pushed or forced. I've just been trying to continue to do what I typically would do. I've always posted about fitness. I've always shared healthy recipes on my Facebook and stuff. And I mean, I know not everybody has done that. So you might need to kind of branch it out and do new things. But so I want to keep it as natural as possible so that people don't think that I'm trying to sell them something. People just think that this is just, you know, another branch of something that I'm doing in my life and I want to share it with everybody because ultimately that's what I want to do and help them, of course. But, um, sorry, I'm kind of rambling. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I've just been doing that. I've been kind of target marketing. I know that for myself, it is nearly impossible for me to get to a gym. I have two small children that, I, I mean, I'm jailed to my house after 7 p.m. So I can't, it's nearly impossible for me to get to a gym. My husband's on the other side of the country. So I know tons of other moms that are stay-at-home moms or that where I live, a lot of husbands do work in the oil industry on the other side of the country. So a lot of moms are in the same situation as me. So I've been kind of target marketing um, other moms, other stay-at-home moms, that kind of thing. And that's been working really well because I can easily relate to them. So it doesn't feel like I'm lying or making something up, which because I definitely don't want to do that. Because I know myself, if somebody was trying to do that to me, I know personally I would pick up on it immediately. So I've been trying to pay attention to what they're saying to me, all the little details, so that I can make it personable to them um, instead of just talking about myself. I want to make it about them and know that I'm listening to what their needs are, all that kind of stuff. Um, visions of what's to come. I have no idea. <laughs> if I'm honest, I was, I was like thinking about it before the call. I have absolutely no idea. I honestly am blown away that this is even happening right now, if I'm quite honest. Um, I know what my personal goals are. I know that I want to reach Diamond by July. That's for sure. Um, whether or not I'm crazy for thinking that, I don't know, but like I definitely want that. Um, I want to be able to help as many people as I possibly can. I know how hard it is to struggle with all of these different things that Beachbody can just fix for people if you just stick to it and, you know, give it your all. So I just kind of want to open that door for other people because I was given this amazing opportunity. So why wouldn't I want to share that with everybody that I know, realistically? Um, so I, I literally message everybody that I can possibly fit into one day because like Jessica said, I'm a mom of two children that constantly want my attention. I'm a photographer, my husband's away, so it's all on me. But I have to make time to do it if I want to succeed. And like, I mean, today I had a ridiculously busy day and I listened to some quick personal development while I was showering. <laughs> I just put it on audio and like listened to it as I was washing my hair. So. I just believe that you just have to make time to do it. Like I'm not, I'm not going to let myself make excuses and stand in my own way. So um, speaking of which, the reason why that I'm so passionate about it and my belief in this is because it's clean, natural eating. Shakeology is amazing. It's, you know, solid workouts. There's, I, I believe it because it's true. I'm not lying to people about anything. I'm literally saying these are the natural ways that you can, you know, be the best that you can possibly be. It, it, it sells itself <laughs> realistically. Like it's just natural. It's not, you know, I don't know if everybody, okay. It's not like, you know, drink some weight loss drink or something like that, something crazy or some crazy diet for people to go on. It's literally just feeding your body with healthy food and working out. It's pretty simple. <laughs> anyway, I don't know <laughs> what else to talk about. I kind of like sped through everything I was going to say. You did great, girl. I'll, I'll interject real quick. Um, I'm like 
I'm just like blown away and I literally was like holding back tears at one moment. <laughs> I get all like emotional and corny, but in it, you guys all just like blow my mind and like I just get the chills like thinking about how awesome you guys are and like you guys all inspire me and like I'm seriously I was about to cry. I don't know. It was just really good. So thank you for sharing. But I was just going to like dissect a little bit about what you said. So like it, to me, it sounds like the number one thing that has propelled you to reach your goals really quickly is that you have a really big why and you yeah. believe in this and you're not letting any fear or anything hold you back. Like you're just committed to do what it takes no matter what. And it sounds like you're keeping it simple, like you're just using the system that you're plugged into, like you're plugged into the training system, you're doing the three vital behaviors, and you're managing your time. So exactly. it's really those things. It's really just belief and having a big why, time management, following a system. Um, I mean, are there any other things like – like what other tips would you give people that, cause I know a lot of people on this call still have full-time jobs. Like I know when I, like when I started this, I had a full-time job and was going to school. So we, I think we all know busy and I think a lot of people struggle with um, how to fit this in when they're busy. And maybe you could just share a little bit about what each day yeah. looks like for you and like maybe what your, your system looks like when you sit down because I to work because I feel like we all have a different system of like exactly what we do when we sit down like I know I first open Twitter and add new people there and then I kind of jump into invites and you know what I mean like yep. we all kind of have a different order we do it in so if you just want to share a little bit about what your day-to-day -day looks like and any time management tips that you may have I um of course I mean I'm still kind of tweaking this <laughs> as I go because I am just starting. But typically, first thing in the day, what I try to do, and I'm trying to post it anywhere between like seven and nine because I know that people are on Facebook in the morning at different times. So, but I just try to post something positive for the day, um, <clears throat> which I would have done before anyway, so that's not something new. But something positive for the day, I'll check messages and typically like I kind of split my day up because I am so busy. So I'll try and do like an hour or so in the morning, an hour or so at noon, hour or so in the afternoon maybe. And then in the evening is typically when I will like send out invites because I know that that's when most people, for myself at least, um, are online. So in the, in the evening so that I can respond right away because my children are in bed. I'm not, you know, I'm not sidetracked with anything like that so I can respond to them right away so that I'm not missing the opportunity. Um, and then I also will do my personal development in the evening. While I'm editing pictures, I'll listen to stuff or watch a video. And, um, but as far as when I sit down for those hours, Typically what I do right now, and I've just kind of been like reworking it the last two days, is I will respond to any questions first so that as I'm working, I can answer any ongoing questions that kind of spiral from that. Um, I will usually go on Instagram and like and follow new people, like at least five of their pictures and comment on at least one. Um, and then I will typically go onto Facebook and do like a post or share something and just invite, invite, invite. And then while I'm waiting for the invite responses to come back, I do follow-ups. I go through my messages or through my list, um, which I just reorganized. So I'm hoping that this system works a little bit better. But I, I have invited like hundreds of people over the last two weeks. So... I will typically go back and I keep a calendar of which days I'm supposed to, you know, follow up with certain people. So I will check that and go through. And that's basically what I do. I keep it pretty simple. <laughs> so it sounds like you have a pretty solid follow-up system of how you keep up with your prospects, right? I try. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, it definitely can improve. Um, I need, I've been, <laughs> I've been keeping it in, I have right here. It's like this big thing full of, you know, tabs and stuff. Um, and I kind of keep them separate into different groups. I took your tip about the hot, warm, cold prospects. So I kind of went through and made note, <clears throat> made notes next to everyone. So I know who I should be, you know, following up with right away as to who maybe I would do like once a month. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, besides that, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Chelsea asked a question in the chat box, and this is actually something I was going to kind of ask too, because um, you already have signed up five coaches. So Chelsea asked what invites you're using to like tell people about the coaching opportunity. And I know just because I know from talking to you how you've done it, but maybe if you could just share a little bit about like with the team, like what invites you're using and how you've been able to sign up five coaches. Honestly, the invites that I'm using and what I, what I based my typical conversation and responses off of, I mean, of course I personalize it per person. Um, but when I very first signed up and you sent me the new coach checklist and the what to say to people that are invited document from Dropbox, I just went through that and made it my own. Basically still used <laughs> kind of like what you're saying and that kind of thing, but reworded it into myself. And I mean, I would change a couple of things, obviously, just to make it me. But that's what I use. I use that and I just follow those steps. Okay, cool. That makes it easy. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Some of the people that you've signed up are people um, that are like doing this just for the discount for now, right? Yeah. Okay. So just to like, cause I, I mean, I know that and I know a lot of us all, all have discount coaches as well, but just so that you guys are clear, like you can, you can sign up people that want to do your challenge group as discount coaches to help you reach your goals and it'll help them save money. So there's many different ways that you can go about signing people up as coaches. Um, like I know, for example, like one of Candace's coaches is her husband. I know Chelsea did that when she started. Most of you that are on here that have a spouse, that like your spouse is one of your coaches. So that is definitely something that can help too. Yeah. Um, gosh, I don't really think there's anything else. That, were you about to say something? Um, I was just going to say that as far as like the coaching part of it, um, definitely um, I would say probably at least half of the people – no, maybe 40% of the people that I have signed up so far are literally, they just flat out said, I just want the discount. I just want to be a discount coach. Of course, down the road, once they start seeing results and stuff, I'm definitely going to try and show them like you should be sharing this with people and try and get them to, um, sorry, I'm missing that question. Um, trying to get them to convert themselves into coaches because it would benefit them. I mean, of course it would benefit me too, but also them, like ultimately that's what I want to do is just help people. So, um, yeah, I definitely am having quite a few people that just want the discount. <laughs> if people are worried that they shouldn't have that, then that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and as far as the indirect or direct invites, I'm using both. Um, I typically will send it like a mass indirect and then people that I've kind of been forming, I'll send a direct invite to them. That's what I've been trying to do. Okay, that makes sense. I think that the example that's in the document that you got when you signed up as a coach, that's the one where it has the direct invitation, right? Yeah. I believe so. Okay, cool. Well, we only have two minutes left on here. Does anyone, I usually have a couple action items for you guys, but I don't really feel like we need to go into that tonight. I usually have a closing quote, but I won't go into that. We'll do the drawing for a prize in the team page after this. But, okay, we have less than a minute now. Does anyone want to ask Candace any other questions before our time runs out? I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for listening to me. <laughs> Ramble on. I talk so much. How am I handling objections? Honestly, I get a lot of money objections, and I have only overcome – who I suck <laughs> at the money objections. I'm still working on it. And that is a major thing actually that I have on my list of, <laughs> of questions to send to Jessica to kind of work on. That is something that I definitely need to work on. Um, I am Canadian A. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that is definitely something that I need to work on. So I, uh, I just kind of, I'll send them, you know, stories or I'll give them another option and I try to fix whatever issue it is that they're having. Other than that, if they're just flat out saying no, then I'll say, okay, I'll keep in touch. And I plan on following up with them again and keep sending them invites. I'm not just going to give up on them because if it is a money thing, eventually they're going to have it. 
Right. Can I interrupt you one quick second before it hangs us up? There are some people that were on here to hang out with me and Chelsea for the 830 call. So if you're on here for that, go ahead and exit this out and then restart it with the same number that I sent you. I apologize. I didn't realize we were running over. For the rest of you guys, I love all of you. I hope you have a good night. And thanks so much for sharing, Candice. You did amazing, and I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.